So let's see a few more options here. Truncate. The use case for truncate here is, let's say, in, at times what will happen is few of the legacy systems, old systems, uh, it won't happen. Like I never worked on these options in Snowflake, but usually it will happen. Like you know, so if you got any extra, so what, let's let's first check the length of the particular field. Okay, so here the length. Okay. The length is 93. For example, in the table, we defined it like var char 50. So only 50 characters will be allowed, but we got 93 characters. So in that case, what we can do is we can say truncate is equal to true. Then what it will do is it will truncate extra characters, which is like apart from what we defined in the table. Okay, that we usually will do in MDM or like, you know, if you worked on like uh, Informatica, MDM, uh, all this uh, in all these teams, what they will do is they'll usually truncate the data from source system. So let's see that I will take uh, the same option. Can on error continue. So here uh, we'll just mention it like truncate columns is equal to true. Okay, so truncate. Uh, and there is a one more option, I think uh, truncate and enforce length, they both works in the same way. Truncate columns, by default it is false. If I make it true, yeah, I need to truncate this table first. So in the last class, if you remember, it skipped five records. Now it is skipping only one record. So except this record. So except this record, all these records got loaded. So why these records are loaded in the last class? It didn't. Uh, we didn't. We are not able to load this because of an extra length. Now uh, we have this extra characters under. We'll truncate these extra characters. Let's say if if I define like this column property as 50. So it will take like first 50 characters and at the end whatever extra characters it will rank it. Okay, so that is the use case for truncate columns. So the second option, I don't know why they given like uh, two options, but there is one more option called enforce length. Enforce length false. By default it is true. Okay, if I'm making it false, then again it works in the same way, same way like as a truncate columns. Uh, so I don't know why they provide two options, but they both aim at the same thing. Whatever the extra length, it will truncate. Okay. Mm. Now we'll see. Uh, So let's say now the use case uh, guys so like we loaded all the files now I just loaded all these files to a table because all the columns are same everything is same I just loaded. Now like let's say one of you contributed these files like you are working in other team you are sending the files to me I loaded now you emailed me saying like users data file the one which uh, you shared like last hour, you know maybe like one hour back i already loaded now you are coming back and saying like this is a wrong data please delete that data so how i can do that because if i query my table so if i query this table users So can I identify that file now? Because all the, I don't have anything. So usually in the ETL world, we in the staging tables are, uh, we'll maintain the metadata, right? Metadata, like, you know, date modified will be there, date created. And also like, what is the file name? 
so SSIS, SSIS Informatica sometimes what we'll do is we will load like what is the source contributed to the data with system if it is a file what is the file name so we have all these audit columns in the staging tables as a best practice so from snowflake side uh, they are giving us the two functions to get the file name file name and file row I, row number okay and before going to that scenario yeah so till now we have uh, queried the table loaded the data directly let's say you don't have access to s3 officially you can't log into s3 but in snowflake you have a indirect access to s3 that means whenever you list the stage you can see all the files now let's assume that you now you want to open one of the file as you don't have aws access how you will open so from the snowflake side you have you can follow this uh, convention okay uh, dollar convention so when i say dollar one dollar two from at the rate my stage so this could be internal stage or external stage any stage that's fine so if you see here i'm able to retrieve the column info where are all this data the data is in internal labeled stage now i'm reading all the data right uh, i'm reading all the data from these files indirectly so yeah if you want to read the data or like uh, if you want a sneak preview of like your data from the staging area then you can use this dollar notation you cannot give the column name only dollar one stands for first column dollar two second column so let's say i'll keep dollar three first okay so dollar three comma then what will happen let's see so last name has came first in our file the id is the first column first name follows by last name but as we called out dollar three uh, as the first order we got the uh, last name in the first uh, column okay so what is the other use case for this so let's say in your file you have id as a first column but in my table last name is the first column so in that case like quickly like if you want to you know when you are copying the data you want to rearrange the column order then you can do with uh, this dollar notation okay and other use case uh, small transformations not complicated transformations small transformations date and time and you want only month from date and maybe like uh, uh, you want to convert to a string so small small transformations you can uh, write here so like let's say concat you know some function like this column with other column you can achieve like small transformations not like all the transformations but only few transformations but uh, uh, in real time we don't do transformations on staging area because uh, what will happen is as of now like let's think about the scenario the data is sitting in s3 bucket you are transforming the data and loading the data into snowflake that will consume like a lot of credits what alternately what is the method is you have to load the data into staging table from staging table to production table do all the transformations inside snowflake that is fine but uh, uh, officially yes you can do not all the transformations few transformations you can achieve directly from the stage and you can rearrange the column order something like this okay now uh, the metadata columns i am talking about two functions metadata dollar uh, file name okay then meta data dollar file row number so what i'm getting extra here if you see i'm able to read the file number and also what is the first row id in the bad file it's like a header right here what is the first row this is my first row right in the file this is first row so here i will get like all this uh, metadata for my auditing so now what we'll do is we'll do one thing we'll create one table again so let's design like one more staging table here i'll say like file underscore name string uh, file maybe like uh, row id and maybe like this is integer comma okay let's create the 
other table so let's see how we can uh, now like copy command copy into users from my stage right okay now let's give it like here one more enter now i'll take from here i'll copy all these things so how many columns are there i think i we have around uh, six columns column three four five six okay so because we have total six columns inside this file metadata file name so i'll take all this query okay so i'll put it over here so remaining all will go here like you know file format file format is equal to type type is equal to csv skip header is equal to one got one error let's see what is this so metadata fi looks good to me like i don't know any mistake here okay where is the select i'm missing the select statement okay it will give us the error because if you see we have the date uh, coming into integer column so i'll just have to say on error continue okay okay so this is how i mean now it is easy for me because when i say like users to if i query this table now you know i have this file name i can always like if this if any source system complain like this is wrong data then i can simply delete that data from that particular file okay all right so this is about uh, uh yeah i think these scenarios are enough so we have seen like error handling data validation collecting the error records how to filter the files uh, pattern purge collecting uh, rejected records so i have one table function i'll give like a information uh information underscore schema dot copy history emp or users users right so last 5 hours whatever the data i copied from which stage what is the last loaded time how many rows i loaded how many rows it passed any error everything you will see the status as i loaded previous load history if you want to check the previous load history then this is the query so from the information schema uh, from copy history this is the table so from start to end time i'm passing this as a parameters last 5 hours suppose i want like last 5 days i can use this days last 5 days it will give okay so this is a function to check the previous load history into snowflake previously loaded data history uh, yeah this keep this uh, command like handy uh and also there is one more so if i go to demo one 
information schema. Let me type it like that. Yeah, this is also same, same like this, but here, this is a parent view for this one. Okay, so here you will get like more information. Here you will get a less information, little less information. So, but uh, you will get the same thing from what is the file name? What is the table name? At what time it got loaded? How many rows it got loaded? Uh, all the, this is like a uh, admin, like little bit related to admin, but uh, if you want to check like what are the previous uh, uh, loaded and all previous loaded data you can check it from here okay so this is to check load history yeah. this is the copy history both are same okay so till uh, till now we seen like external internal data unloading data loading scenarios okay 